Hey everyone, I hope you had a great spring break. I thought that we would do a video instead of staying after school on the Monday after spring break. Nobody really probably wants to do that. Not sure what I was thinking when I planned that. So I'm just going to go over the agenda items. I did post the agenda on the Ning, but I'm going to kind of detail some of the items um, and explain a few of them for you. And hopefully, if you have any questions, you can, of course, email or text, come by and see me um, or the APs or whoever about any of the questions from the agenda. But it's pretty self-explanatory, so I think it'll be fine. The first thing on the agenda is Donors Choose. We are allowed to do Donors Choose again, in case you weren't aware they put that off for a while. Um, I do believe that there were some folks, I'm not sure about in Fair but they were applying for things like asking for things like candy for their classroom um, and that you know kind of shines a negative light on the school district so they really want you to really be thoughtful and purposeful about what you're applying for so they had admin um, from campuses and campus reps we had two of our very own teachers Emily Lucas and Scott Moore sit in on the committee and to kind of come up with this process on how to apply for donors choose so thank you both for doing that. Um, so there is an authorization packet that I have put on the Ning. There's actually directions on how to access it, questions and answers about donors choose, and an authorization packet. And I put that on the Ning under quick reference docs under donors choose info. So if you are wanting to do something for donors choose for your classroom, I am more than supportive of that and will help you through that process. And just as long as it's not candy, I'll buy you candy. Um, but there's an authorization packet you have to fill out. We can go through it together, and you are more than welcome to put some donors choose items out there for your classroom. Um, that's it's a pretty. I mean, it, it walks you through it. If you are asking for technology, there's an extra step that you have to do through I support. I think just to make sure that technology services can support it. Um, but it's a pretty self-explanatory. It's you know it's lengthy, but it's not it's not that difficult to to go through. Um, so if it's something that you're really wanting, then I would suggest going through donors choose. Okay, the next agenda item is cleaning and packing process. So I know that at grade level meetings, the APs gave you a hard copy of the process. So what we're really asking is that if you are a liaison or in charge of a content area and or you have a grade level cabinet, we're not talking about your very personal, your, your personal cabinets in your classroom. We're not talking about those. Those will be on you to clean out and pack. But these are things that it's school-based and school community owns and operates and anyone can go in there and check stuff out. Those kinds of, those kinds of cabinets, we're asking that they be cleaned out first because certainly we're not going to take everything that's in those cabinets. When the APs and I went through the cabinets, there were dust layers years thick. Um, and so if it does not have a label that it was purchased by Title I or ESL or bilingual or GT and we haven't used it, you can throw it away. If you, and you can make that professional judgment, um, throw it away. If it has a label on it, we are getting pallets and separate boxes, not the ones we already have for packing, but older boxes that we will have to pack those items on the boxes in the boxes on the pallets and they will come and do a pickup and take them away. Um, they feel like they can auction off some of the items. I tried to explain that there are books on tape and there are globes that are faded and some globes have the Soviet Union on them. Um, but they feel like um, they could put them up for auction and see what happens. So um, more power to them. Um, so if it has a label, it has to go in the box on the pallet, which will be by the stairs as of uh, probably Tuesday. If it does not have a label and it hasn't been used, throw it away. Or you can take it home and keep it, whatever you want to do. But we're not going to move all that old, old stuff to the new building. Um, once the cabinets are cleaned out, then you can put a paper on the outside saying clean and ready to be packed. At that point, any staff member should be able to pack a cabinet that's ready to be packed like that. Because everything in there we're assuming is going to the new building. Um, and so... The packing process will be you get a box, you get some tape, you get an inventory sheet from Sonia, and you get a colored sheet of paper that will indicate where the movers are to move it to the new building. That's taped onto the box. So all of this is laid out on the hard copy that you got at grade level meetings, or it's also on the Ning, and we'll also have more hard copies of it in the workroom. Um, it's very important that we follow this process so that we can make this as smooth as possible 
um, the moving process as smooth as possible. Um, it's easier to pack it all and just throw it in boxes, but then once we get over there, it's going to be a monumental job to unpack it while we're getting ready for school to start, while we're getting classrooms set up, while we're doing trainings for new systems. Um, so just think about as you're packing, how you're making it easier for others and yourself to unpack it in August um, or hopefully in late July. Okay, so speaking of packing, there are course numbers on the agenda for this meeting um, for the packing parties on the Saturdays. There's three Saturdays, April 29th, May 6th, and May 20th. Each of those Saturdays has three different course numbers. There's a total of nine course numbers. You can choose three. I can only give up to six hours of PD for this process. I think I, I labeled it like team building and getting ready for the next school year, which is accurate. Um, but I think if I give more than six hours of PD credit for that, it might be questioned. So the hours are broken down for each of those Saturdays, 10 to 12, 12 to 2, and 2 to 4. You can pick and choose. You can do all three 10 to 12. You can do a mix and match. You can do all one Saturday. Whatever you want to do, the max is six hours. Um, everyone needs to have some hours for packing. Um, whether it's after school, I'm not giving PD credit for that, but I am giving PD credit for the Saturdays. So think about how you want that to work um, how, and what, what works best for your family. Um, okay, I know there's been some grumbling about the allowable furniture in the new building. Guys, I'm not saying that you can't bring your own furniture. What we're saying at this point is we can't commit to large furniture items like your bookcases and stuff that some of you have to bringing those. Um, I... I know the APs talked about you can bring your own chair. If it's a studio chair, a rocking chair, a big old comfy chair, whatever chair that you like to sit in to teach in, um, absolutely you can bring. Lamps, you can bring lamps. Those are fine. What we, what we can't commit to at this point is extra furniture, large furniture. Um, you're all getting two bookcases, and you're getting individual desks and chairs, and we went through all of the stuff that you're getting, um, and you're, you know your built-in cabinets are there. But I, we are just not committing at this point to allowing bookshelves to come in um, and large furniture items like that. I'm not saying that we won't, but until we get over there and see what it looks like, how much room we have, um, we just can't, we're just not going to say yes to that yet. Um, certainly, we want you to make your classroom your own um, and have your own flair and personality and what, you know, the needs of your classroom. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be, you know, cookie cutter and robotic um, and, you know, sterile. Absolutely not. But we are just not committing on large furniture items yet um, until we get there. Remember that one whole wall are windows to the outside. The other wall to the corridor is glass. Those, I know they're not all the way to the floor. There is, you know, some, like probably half the wall is, is solid. Um, and then the other part, you're going to have cabinets on one end if you have a double room. And then you're going to have a, a panel mounted and a whiteboard on the other wall. So there's not like a whole, whole bunch of open wall space for you to hang a bunch of stuff um, and for a bunch of furniture to, to block those those windows and glass. Um, but we'll just have to see when we get over there and the furniture that we ordered, what it looks like and what, what kind of space it fills up and what kind of space you have left over. Um, you won't have filing cabinets. So there is that. This creates a little bit more space. Um, I know a few of you were not happy about the filing cabinets, but guys, $15,000, I just could not justify. I could not do it. Um, when And they kept pushing me to not order filing cabinets, and I pushed back saying, yes, we need them, yes, we need them. And then when they finally were like, Kathy, it's fifteen grand. Um, this is the furniture people like the, for the district, the buyers. And I was like, I, they were like, you, you know, do they really need them? And I thought, I don't, I don't really think so. Um, because you've got two drawers in your teacher cabinet that are full-size filing cabinet drawers and a drawer in your teacher desk, and everyone's getting a desk. So you have a lockable drawer in there along with your lockable cabinet for the teacher cabinet. Um, so I do know that some of you were asking about the dimensions of the cabinets. I think they're about six feet tall. I don't know how depth-wise. I do, I do believe, and I'm pretty confident, that you could fit milk crates in there. Some of you were asking me about milk crates. I'm pretty confident that you could fit those in there. I will see if I can get detailed dimensions of the cabinets for you, though. 
to kind of ease your concerns on that. Okay, the next item is STAR. We do have STAR coming up, not this week, but the next week on March 28th and 29th. That will involve schedule changes for fourth and fifth grade um, and kinder and first for PEAM. So I will, um, I've detailed that on the upcoming events, but I'll also put a detailed time schedule on the NING this week about those schedule changes. And then another reminder is Spring Fling is on April the 8th. I did send out a sign-up genius for you. For all staff, needs to work one hour, a one-hour shift. And that sign-up genius went out via email on March the 9th, so please look for that if you have not signed up yet. Most of you have signed up, so thank you very much. There is a handful that have not. Um, everyone needs to work an hour shift. Those of you who can't attend, um, you need to talk to me and let me know. So we're going to get an alternative activity for you to do to help out. Um, there's a handful of you that have already talked to me, so thank you. I'll have got you written down, and I'll be in touch on what the activity is um, that we need help with before the event. If you are one of the eight who signed up for the Royal Flush, thank you very much. The Royal Flush is basically a dunk tank, but you're sitting on a toilet and somehow there's water dumped on your head. Um, so thank you for being willing to do that. Your 30-minute Royal, Royal Flush shift counts as one hour. I also put the link to the Sign Up Genius on the agenda as well so for you to access in case you have not uh, signed up. And then the last reminder is auction baskets are due, completed, and all put together, looking spiffy, by March 31st. Um, I'm not sure where PTO wants us to hold those. My guess is the stage, but until further notice, don't put them on the stage yet. Um, just keep them in your classrooms if you can. So I will get details from PTO on where they would like to put those. Anyway, I'm trying to keep this video in under 12 minutes, so I think I've made it. If you will register for this course, I will give you a one hour credit. Um, and I might have a sign up sheet somewhere for you to sign in that you watch the video. And I'll give you one hour credit PD. Hopefully you enjoy your gift of time. I'm outside. Sorry I didn't say this at the beginning. My kids are playing Minecraft on their iPads and are very loud. I'm not sure how that's possible, but virtually they fight and are loud on Minecraft. And it's a nice day outside, so I'm just soaking up the last few hours I have of spring break. We have 10 weeks left, you guys, so let's make it a strong finish. It's going to be crazy just with um, the end of the year always is crazy, trying to wind down the year. And then it's going to, you know, on top of this year with cleaning out and packing and moving an entire building to a new beautiful campus. Um, so let's just think about how we're going to finish out the year strong the last 10 weeks. Admin is here to support you, and um, I do believe we have a deadline, speaking of the support, a deadline for your pink celebrate notes being cashed in. I will look and see what our notes said about what the deadline is and post that on the agenda. I do believe it's like mid-April. Those need to be cashed in so that we can fulfill all of those rewards um, throughout May. Anyway, hope you guys had a great spring break. Looking forward to seeing everyone this week.